Good morning and welcome back to your weekend unboxing here on Gaming with ADHD, where today we're going to take a look at G.I. Joe Battle for the Arctic Circle, powered by Axis and Allies. Now, this is a new game from Renegade Game Studios, who lately has been kind of making a splash, taking over titles that originally came out of Hasbro or Avalon Hill, and either sprucing them up and... Uh, making better components, better presentation, or um, honestly just reprinting the game. So uh, this I was pretty excited about. Uh, if you're a longtime viewer of the channel, you know I am a big fan of G.I. Joe and its associated characters. And so to see something like this where it's G.I. Joe but in sort of this world-spanning uh, you know, conflict against Cobra... Uh, honestly, I was pretty excited. I didn't play a lot of Axis and Allies when I was a kid. I did play it a couple of times, uh, but it wasn't ever really my thing. So, you know, seeing this, seeing this kind of a game, regardless, I was all in on it. So, with that said, uh, do make, before we get into looking at the actual game, do make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I try to put out a few videos each week covering all sorts of tabletop gaming content. And whether it's board games, miniatures, role-playing, uh, or anything in between, I'd love for you to come along and see what we have to share. So, with that out of the way, let's take a look at what we get inside. Now, keep in mind, this is an unboxing. I haven't played this yet, even though it's been out for a few weeks. I've just been busy. But, you know, this is going to kind of give us our first impressions, let you see the components, see what you're going to get out of the box, and... I'll let you know how excited I am about actually getting the game to the table. So, first off, my biggest my biggest excitement about stuff from Renegade Games, uh, especially in regards to G.I. Joe, the art is top-notch. This looks like some modern comic book art, stuff that you would see either from Skybound, who currently has the license, or maybe back in the day from uh from marvel you know whatever it is it's great art it's nice comic book art it's good representations of the characters i mean this nice giant cobra commander here on the cover uh you know some of the more popular joes uh the um the snow serpent uh characters i love the snow serpent character i live in arizona it's a thousand degrees here but for some reason the Cobra Snow, Snow Troopers, always my favorite. So having three of these guys on the cover, great. Um, I'm going to feel like an idiot because I can't remember the name. The Snow Cat, I believe it is. Uh, the Snow Cat, the Cobra version of the Snow Cat. Anyway, all great stuff. The great snow themes, great. I, I love this picture. This is a great picture. Renegade, can I have a print of the picture? I'll put it on a wall or something. I don't know. Regardless, I would love to get this as a print. Um, this is great. So, um, back of the box, obviously, we're going to get indication of what we get inside. Uh, pictures of most of the miniatures. This, I actually think, is really cool. Super excited about this. Um, got a Rattler, Sky Striker, Snowcat, uh snow serpent and tundra wolf i think that's it i don't remember i'm sorry everyone anyhow let's open it up i've stalled i've stalled long enough anyhow all right so first off we are going to get our rule book um not bad uh it sort of feels like newsprint like not the I mean, it's got good color, so I like that. I'm just not entirely certain how much it's going to hold up. All right, it's the Cobra Wolf. Winter Operational Light Fighting Vehicle. I love that. <laughs> There's always these names, and they're just so ridiculous. But it's like... Like, it works, sure. All right. And, but overall, I mean, it's not bad. It's it's 
fairly rules dense. Um, I mean, come on, it's Axis and Allies. Were you really surprised? Uh, but then it looks like they have scenarios. So um, here's a different here's setups for uh, for different scenarios. What your victory conditions are. Uh, scenario two. So we've got uh, the cold open, the hot start, and base brawl. All right. So we've got three different scenarios, different setups for the game. Um, you know, not bad. I mean, it's again, it, it all takes place at the North Pole. Um, it it is the return of the weather dominator. I am. Dude, they have, just looking at, at what they've done so far, they have packed so much theme in this. I am super excited. All right. So, we've got some tokens. Uh, obviously, with the Weather Dominator, you're going to be able to create ice. So, you've got different ice hexes that you can put on the board. Um, this is really disappointing. This is super flimsy cardboard. Um, Renegade has been making really, really quality stuff. I'm actually really annoyed with this. Um, they should not... It should not be this thin. That's a little disappointing. I mean, I don't think it will affect the gameplay. Like, I mean, you could have plain paper. Um, but, I mean, come on. They've, they've, they've put so much into art. Come on, guys. Give us, give us some better card pieces again this is the same level of cardboard uh these so it is up to four players so you've got two joe characters admiral keelhaul and snow job uh and cobra commander destro for cobra got some more tokens got the weather dominator um looks like just a rules reference for the weather dominator I like the look of this, like it's the G.I. Joe um, card backs. Um, I just wish it... Man, I am like really annoyed at how crappy this cardboard is. It, it should have and could have been some much thicker cardboard. Um, Destro's face, eh, a little off, but overall, I'm, I have no problems with the art. But that cardboard's ridiculous. All right, we have the game board. Now, the game board is nice and big. We've got a nice... So it's three folds. It's not going to fit in the infamously small work area. Sorry, folks. So we'll just kind of look at this because we've got an objective. Uh, I think this is one of the bases. Different point objectives around the board. Uh, but overall, I mean, the art, again really good um you know you can see it nice and clean very clean print um it is not double-sided see okay for something like this I, okay i realize it's battle for the arctic circle but they could have like give us a map on the other side of like antarctica or something i don't know we're already dealing with snow characters. Give us another snowflake. I think, I think they could have done that, um, pretty easily. Uh, looks like there is a player order down here. Um, anyways, overall, very happy with the board. Um, but again, give us some replayability. Give us, you know, you're not giving us the entire globe, so, you know. Print a couple of different sides. All right, so we have the black player, which this is a cobra player. Ooh, I'm gonna have to zoom in on this. And let's get these. All right, we've got a couple of reference sheets. That's good. All right, so. All right, we have a teeny tiny rattler. This is amazing. There's a lot of detail in this, even for being this small. Lots of different missiles. I am not going to paint. I'm not even going to dry brush these. These are way too small. 
got little destroyers. See, seriously, okay, so like this game, this game alone reinforces my theory that that Cobra has already taken over the world. They're just, you know, trying to finish taking over the United States. How does Cobra get an aircraft carrier or a destroyer, for that matter? Anyway, <laughs> sorry, just me complaining. Uh, we got one of the little snow serpents. Get the backpack. The miniatures are not great. You are not, like, okay, anyone who paints these up, more power to you. I applaud your efforts, but no, I am not that insane. A uh, little wolf snow vehicle. So, I mean, there's good detail, but, I mean, again, these are absolutely tiny. They are clearly not to scale. Otherwise, you know, the snow serpents are all giants or something. I don't know. Um, but, again, it's a, it's a strategic game board this is not uncommon so all right so we've got black pieces black and red for cobra pieces are all the same um, just different colors um, then we've got actually let me get the blue ones they'll probably show up better I can tell you right now, I'm excited to play this. I think this will be fun. Um, oh, we've got chips. Basically, these represent, I think, three and five. Or, no, no. The, the gray represents one. The green represents three. So, instead of... Uh, basically, if you run out of miniatures, um, then you stack it on top of the chips and it represents more so you would put chips underneath you know you'd have a little stack underneath your gi joe guy who looks a little bit different looks kind of like dusty <laughs> the desert guy um yeah i realize he doesn't show up very well don't worry he doesn't show up very well in person either um then we've got the snow cat Again, a little light on the detail, but especially if you're if you're playing the game and you know you've got it out in front of you, you're not gonna you're not gonna worry too much. The destroyer is the same, the carrier is the same, but then we've also got the sky striker wings out. Obviously, makes it a little bit more identifiable. Got some decent detail on the bottom. So again, these are tiny. You're not expecting a whole lot as far as presentation. So to get just the general shape, I'm totally fine with that. That's that's really all you need in a game at this scale. Um, it is some hard plastic, which I actually appreciate as opposed to the more soft PVC style. They probably did that so that the um, so that what little details they did have would show up better, because um, obviously with you know much smaller miniatures, if they went with PVC, it would not have it would not have looked good. So, all right, so that is GI Joe Battle for the Arctic Circle. Um, I. So I, I will admit, the hard part right now is going to be finding people to play with. Um, a friend of mine, I texted him a picture of the box. He's like, I get to play Snow Job! Um, and he lives in Colorado. So that's going to make it a little bit more difficult. But regardless, I'm pretty excited for it. I think this is going to be, uh, I think this is going to be fun, at least as far as just being able to play out some of those giant G.I. Joe battles that you always kind of imagined. Uh, but never had enough figures or living room space in order to do it. So uh, I think that'll be fun. But regardless, this is G.I. Joe Battle for the Arctic Circle. There will be an affiliate link down below to Amazon where you can pick it up. That's where I got my copy. Um, but other than that, let me know down in the comments. What do you think of this? What do you think of the presentation? What do you think of them using the Axis and Allies game engine? You know, have you played this? You know, let's keep the conversation going. I'm happy to hear from you. So thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it. And we'll talk to you next time.